If someone told you to spray milk on your plants, wrap your seedlings in pantyhose, and to bury your underwear in the garden, you'd probably block their number. But here's the wild part. These tricks actually do work. And from my experience, can increase the productivity of your garden enormously. If you don't know who I am, hi, hello. My name is Ashley. I have a Bachelor of Science in Soil Science. I've been working in the world of agriculture for over a decade, and I've been gardening since I was five years old. Good gardening? No, but I've been gardening nonetheless. And so so I take that experience and then put it into videos because who would have thought an expensive piece of paper would lead me to becoming a YouTuber one day. Today we're going to be digging into some science garden hacks. I have three, but I also have some bonus ones in there, all of which are going to be based in science. So what we're going to do is we're going to discuss what the hack is and why science shows that it works and what I've practically done in my garden over the years to implement these. Spraying your zucchinis down with milk may sound insane. And no, we're not making a cereal. We're actually fighting powdery mildew. So powdery mildew can affect a number of different plants, in particular cucurbits and the legume pea family. Fungicides do work. In specific, a sulfur powder will work wonderfully, but there are cheaper and more effective methods in the form of milk. In 1999, this is kind of where we figured this out, Bentol did a study on milk and it showed that a 10% dilution of milk actually did kill the fungal spores that made powdery mildew. The easiest way to make this is one part milk to nine parts water. So you're going to take one cup of milk and then put in nine cups of water. And this milk, by the way, does not need to be fresh. It can be your expired stuff. And I personally will make ice cubes of said milk that has gone expired and then just put the ice cube in the water and then put the water into the spray bottle and then you just let it sit there for the morning and then by the time the afternoon rolls around you're spraying down your plants and everything's hunky-dory and it costs you next to nothing because the milk was going to get thrown out anyways so this is actually some crazy science milk plus light specifically you want to do this when she's bright and sunny it causes like a reactive oxygen species and simply what that could be referenced to in real life is when sunscreen meets hand sanitizer. It literally exposes the fungal spores to the intensity of the sun and that in turn is like a redhead in the sun. Rest in pieces. So here's the tactical tip if you're going to go this route. Number one, you skim milk over like a cream. You can use a cream, don't get me wrong, it's just the fats aren't, they don't have any benefit or they're not particularly helpful. For, so ideally the less milk fat the better. Number two is to spray it in the morning as soon as possible so that it it does get the light from the morning all the way into the evening. And number three, you want to apply it weekly and you want to apply it as a preventative measure, not a cure. So you actually want to apply this before there is any signs or symptoms of actual powdery mildew. And this also goes for the fungicides proper that you can purchase. And or if you choose to go with that sulfur powder, all of these should be applied in a preventative measure, not a I need to catch up and fix this because now now I have powdery mildew moment. Okay, so before we move on to number two, let's just give a bonus a 1.1, 1 .1, and that is actually not having to harden off your plants with this trick. Now, this trick was not my invention. This was my grandpa and my grandma's invention, and I use it religiously, and that is using a bucket to actually shade out the space that you transplant into, and therefore not have to harden off. For me personally, I use five gallon pail buckets. I will use plastic containers, I will use coffee canisters, I will use yogurt and cottage cheese containers, and all I do is I cut off the bottom. You can use a hacksaw, you can use a zip cut, you can use scissors, all depends on what you want to do, and you cut the bottom off so you have a big tube. And this giant tube then allows you to put it over top of the plants and shelter them from the sun, from extreme temperature fluctuations, and from the wind. It's just an all-around amazing trick. And because of that, these guys never get hardened off when they leave the greenhouse. They simply leave the greenhouse, get a bucket thrown over top of them, or cedar shingles kind of hammered in around them, and they're left there until 
two to three weeks, once I notice there is new growth on that plant, I will just pop all of that away and you're off to the races. Now, if you have issues with things like pests, mice, voles, sparrows, you name it, anything like that, leave the container on. There's no rule saying you can't. Last year, I left my tomatoes inside of those containers the entire summer. So there's a big black container in the bottom of the tomatoes and then the tomatoes growing up from that. There's nothing saying you can't do that. And I did it because it suppressed the weeds and it was really easy to water directly on top of the roots. It is an actual miracle hack that I absolutely adore. And I highly encourage all of you to give it a shot. Number two is giving your plants aspirin. Yes, that's right, folks. What you want to do specifically is dissolve aspirin in water. And the reason for that is the salicylic acid inside of the aspirin. The number of benefits to using aspirin with your plants is enormous, like seriously enormous. It is essentially a way for the plant to overcome stressors, whether that's in the form of drought, intense heat, pests, disease, mechanical manipulation, say you got hail or something wild like that, transplant stress, all of these salicylic acid in plants, it helps curb that. And the reason why it sounds too good to be true and like it does all of this stuff that just seems over the top is because it actually triggers a plant hormone. And the plant hormone it triggers causes something we call systemic acquired resistance. Essentially, fancy word for unity against all the bad things. Things. Maybe not immunity against me. I still will kill you if you're a plant, but everybody else, every, everything else out there that's normally harmful to plants, you'll be fine. So there's actually a meta-analysis done by War et al. in 2012 that actually showed that salicylic acid helped prevent diseases and tomatoes, peppers, and cucumbers by activating a defense gene specifically. And so when it comes to salicylic acid and what it does, it differs between the plants, but overall every plant responds positively to this. What you want to do is you want to take one regular aspirin pill and you want to crush it up and you want to add it to one gallon of water and then spray, not water, spray the plants down once a week. It's important that it is not a coated aspirin pill and it also is not like a slow low release version. It's just regular cheap aspirin, regular strength, not extra strength. Don't overdo it though, because it can trigger phototoxicity, which essentially will just show up in the form of leaf burn. If this happens, just obviously re-look at your dosaging and make sure that you're putting the right amount in. But yeah, this stuff is like an actual miracle cure. Next one is actually wrapping your plants up in pantyhose, and this is cutworm armor. So while a sexy pantyhose sometimes we'll call all the boys to the yard, cutworms don't like sexy pantyhose or just pantyhose in general which is shocking because every time I wear pantyhose I think to myself I don't have to shave and no one's gonna know turns out cutworms are the exception to this rule and they like the hairy prickly stuff and uh, therefore when you put the pantyhose on it deters them now you could also use tin foil it would do the exact same thing cutworms in general fun fact they need to be able to access the plant from the soil line. So they have to be able to get it in line with the soil. They're not gonna go below the soil and they're not gonna go above the soil. It has to be in line with it. So if you wrap the plant in pantyhose or tin foil at the soil level, cutworms can't touch the plant. Essentially what you wanna do is sink the pantyhose, the tin foil, or you can even use this bu the bucket trick we were talking about before, one inch below the soil level. And it has to be a minimum of one to two inches above the soil level. That is all you need to prevent these guys from continuing their hard work. But Geek Crew, what is the craziest plant hack you've heard of? You have to let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!